There's a new Darius build that has been catching on in solo queue that you need to be taking advantage of. Skarner builds are all over the place right now, so let's set you guys up with the optimal build. We'll be covering all that and much more in today's video as we provide you guys with 10 new OP builds that are on the rise for patch 14.8. And remember, if you're struggling to climb in League, Skill Capped is the only place that guarantees you'll climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. We do this because our service really works, and this is the best time of the season to get in on skill caps as we've just released tons of site exclusive courses designed for you to power learn the most important concepts for climbing in league of legends stupidly fast compared to those who don't use skill cap join today for unlimited access to the world's most famously effective league of legends guides and remember one subscription gives you access to all of our other games as well so what are you waiting for click the link in the description below to stop wasting time being hard stuck and get the rank you actually want and with that said let's get into it for the longest time it's either been Trinity Force or Stride Breaker as the rush item for Darius, but that has all started to change over the past patch. An item that you generally pick up second or third is actually winning the most as a rush item right now, being Sterix Gauge. That's right, it's a Sterix rush on Darius that is heavily outperforming everything else right now. Analytically, the item is winning 3% more than Trinity Force and Stride Breaker. Now, a big perk to building Sterix earlier on in the game is that you get access to 20% tenacity. The tenacity was added to Sterix for Season 14, so if you haven't really been following all the item changes, you may not have even been aware that the item gives you tenacity. With the Season 13 version of Sterix, you would only gain tenacity when the lifeline passive proc'd, but now it's just a flat 20% at all times. This makes the Sterix rush really great for Darius, especially if you are playing into a magic damage top laner. This way, you can pick up Merc Treads as well and get 50% tenacity super early on in the game. The shield from Sterix also makes it so that the 1v1 all-in strength on Darius is extremely powerful. Darius is almost always going to win in a drawn-out extended fight where he can stack his passive and then get the true damage off from his R. Sterix really helps to enable this since with the shield, in a way, it gives Darius an even bigger health bar. So the complete core build that you should be looking to try for this patch is the Sterix Rush into Dead Man 2nd and Force of Nature 3rd. The rune page is Conqueror with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand, while Bone Plating and Unflinching are for secondaries. With Skarner fresh off his rework from 14.7, there are many players who are building him incorrectly, so let's make sure you're on the right track. Rune page for top lane Skarner is something that a lot of players are getting wrong right now, as you want to be taking Comet instead of Grasp. Comet is just so easy for Skarner to proc with his Q, as it's a near guaranteed hit since Skarner's Q slows the enemy and gives Comet time to drop in and deal damage. Unless you're in a matchup where you're extremely confident you can get a ton of Grasp procs off throughout lane, Comet is just a much more consistent keystone rune for the champ. For the build on Skarner, a lot of players are just completely ignoring Heart Steel as a core pickup when it has such immense synergy. Every single one of Skarner's basic abilities scale off of health, so it gives Heart Steel a ton of value since it has the most amount of health for any tank item. A core build we think is really being slept on right now consists of Heart Steel with Sunfire Aegis and Winter's Approach. You can even rush the Sunfire and then go Heart Steel second, but just implementing Heart Steel into your core build is really being slept on right now. With Jarvan buffed in 14.8, if you are looking to pick him up and want to play a more offensive build, there's a setup that is flying under the radar. Instead of going Bruiser and rushing the Sundered Sky, Profane Hydra is winning more than anything else right now and is a great rush on Jarvan. Hydra users have been winning about 1.5 percent more than those running the Sundered Sky Rush over the past patch. You go Profane into Eclipse for the two item core and have some really nice burst strength for the mid game. From then on out, you should transition into more Bruiser or Tank items as Sundered Sky is great in the third slot. This build gives you the ability to push early advantages really well and then once you reach later on into the game, building a bit tankier helps you survive during team fights. The rune page to go alongside this build is Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, followed by Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. It's not just top lane Skarner that players have yet to figure out how to play optimally as Jungle Skarner is being played incorrectly by most players. You most definitely need to be running Heart Steel on Jungle Skarner as it's outperforming all other options by a long shot. Skarner jungle players rushing Sunfire Aegis have only been winning 43% of the time, opposed to Heart Steel users who are literally 5% higher at 48%. So even though Skarner's overall win rate in the jungle right now is absolutely abysmal, once players catch on to this build and with the buffs going through this patch, he's actually in a pretty good spot. As we mentioned for top lane Skarner, the Heart Steel is just such a valuable item for him since all of his basic abilities scale off of health. To back up the legitimacy of this build even further, pros have been running this setup on Skarner consisting of Heart Steel with Sunfire Aegis. From then on out, it's pretty situational as you'll pick up whatever tank item fits best for the game in hand. Rune Page is also where a lot of players are going wrong right now as Phase Rush is being prioritized way too much. Aftershock is looking like the much more consistent rune choice for Skarner Jungle and is what a lot of pros have been liking in solo queue. The stats on this one are pretty nuts as well with Aftershock Skarner players winning over 
were 5% more than those going phase rush. We've started to see a pretty big resurgence of AD Katarina over the past couple of patches, so let's have a look at the core build. Blade of the Ruined King is the rush item, and it's been winning more than alternative options like Nasher's Tooth and Lich Bane. Second item, Wit's End, is slotting in really well right now, and works great in games where the enemy comp has a few magic damage threats. If the enemy comp does not have any magic damage, then building Kraken Slayer instead is the way to go. Third item, Terminus, is what's working amazing, as it's been such an underrated item on Katarina ever since it was buffed to where you can stack the passive 50% faster. Build just offers Katarina a lot of versatility right now, as being able to implement a wit's end into your core when enemy comps are heavier magic damage is such a nice luxury. When you're playing standard AP Cat, you don't really have a good defensive magic damage item, as Banshee's Veil is quite underwhelming in comparison to wit's end. Rune page that you will be running with this setup consists of Conqueror with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand, while Sudden Impact and Relentless Hunter are for secondaries. Hybrid Galio is a very interesting new build that has been popping up as of recent, and with Galio buffed again in 14.8, all the more reason to try out this build. Throughout the entirety of 14.7, the rush item that had been performing the best on Galio was not Lich Bane or Rocket Belt, it was Hollow Radiance. Yes, that's right, the new Magic Resist tank item that was introduced for Season 14. Now, where the hybrid aspect of the build comes into play is for your second item, as Rift Maker is the pickup. Third item, Zhonya's is going to work well for most games. Going for this more sustained damage build has become a lot stronger due to the recent Galio changes from a few patches back. Since Galio's passive cooldown now becomes reduced whenever he lands an ability, you are able to spam out passive a ton in fights, and with this more tanky build, it allows him to stick in fights longer and get max value out of that change. So overall, this build is going to work best for you in games where you see the enemy comp has drafted at least two magic damage threats. This way, you get a lot of value out of that hollow radiance rush and can soak a ton of damage in team fights. The rune page to go along with the build is Aftershock, followed by Shield Bash, Second Wind, and Overgrowth. Roll with Nimbus Cloak and Transcendence for secondaries. Neela is one of the best ADCs that you can play for solo queue this patch, and there's even a new build that you can try. Instead of rushing the Collector like the majority of Neela players do, Essence Reaver has been seeing more play over the past patch and winning just as much. ER has a lot of sneaky value on Neela because her Q cooldown is extremely short, so she's able to proc the Spellblade passive from Essence Reaver very consistently in a skirmish. You also get the 20 ability haste from Essence Reaver that the Collector does not have, and in combination with Quick Blades as your second pickup, it's a really nice amount of haste for the mid game. So much of Neela's strength in solo queue comes from finding catch plays with R, and this build helps to enable that greatly. The rune page with this build is Conqueror, followed by Triumph, Bloodline, and Last Stand, while Sudden Impact and Treasure Hunter are for secondaries. Ever since Terminus was changed so that it's much easier to reach max stacks of its passive, we felt the item has been very undervalued as a first or second pickup on a lot of ADCs. Well, over the past patch, it's finally started to catch on in solo queue, and the Terminus rush is performing extremely well on Ash specifically. Ash players rushing Terminus have been winning about 1% more than those going for Kraken Slayer. The full build that you should be looking to try on Ash for this patch consists of Terminus into Hurricane Second and Wits End Third. This setup has become especially popular over in Korea as it had actually been played more than Kraken Slayer throughout 14.7. Western regions have yet to catch on as much, but we definitely expect that to change moving forward. It's standard stuff for the rune page as you want Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras, followed by Biscuits and Approach Velocity. This next setup for support is one of the most underrated in the entire game right now, and even one that our challenger player Hector has been running in solo queue. Poppy support is the pick, and the build revolves around taking Bloodsong as your support item upgrade. Hector plays his Poppy support a lot more solo carry oriented, so he rushes Boots and then goes into Dead Man's Plate. Swiftness Boots Rush makes the early roam power of Poppy extremely powerful. Sundered Sky is the second item in the build path to amplify the carry strength of Poppy support even more. With Bloodsong, you're pretty much guaranteed to proc the passive every time you look for an engage, so it helps to amplify the all-in power of Poppy. You actually deal a lot of damage with Poppy that players will not expect. Top it all off and provide yourself with even more burst, Hector runs Dark Harvest for the Keystone Rune. If you guys want to learn more about the Poppy support and see this exact build in action, Hector has a new Poppy support commentary on our website. There's been an interesting adaptation that Senna support players have been making with their builds as of recent, and it revolves around switching up your rush item. Umbral Glaive or Ghost Blade have been the most common rush items on Senna for a while now, but what's been seeing more play and winning at a higher clip is Opportunity. Opportunity Rush is really strong because it provides you with the most amount of lethality for any item in the game. You gain 18 flat lethality and then an extra 5 scaling to 10 lethality after being out of combat for 8 seconds. Since lethality is a more valuable stat earlier on in the game when players don't have as much armor stacked up yet, rushing the item makes a lot of sense. The second passive on Opportunity cannot be overlooked as well since getting the burst of movement speed on takedowns can be extremely valuable for a more squishy champ who lacks a gap closer like Senna. So overall, Opportunity just packs a really big punch early on in the game and provides Senna with an incredible one item spike. After building Opportunity, 
opportunity, it's really situational as Ghost Blade, Edge of Night, and Fire Cannon are all viable options. And of course, Blood Song is the support item upgrade. For the rune page, it's Fleet Footwork with Presence of Mind, Alacrity, and Cutdown, followed by Bone Plating and Revitalize for secondaries. Alright guys, one last thing, our rank up guarantee is insane. It's like signing up for the gym and getting a refund if you don't get ripped. That's how confident we are in skill cap. We obsess over making the best guides with top players, rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb easy. If you're ready to level up, visit skillcap.com and see the difference. So there you have it guys, a complete look at 10 new builds you can look to try that are extremely powerful for 14.8. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next one.